Alright, today I am going to be putting together my low pressure switch and connecting all the wiring that will complete the booster pump assembly. And once that's done, I'm going to connect the uh, valves to the timer. And I should be able to test my lines today. I got out a little late. So I might not have enough time, but I think I should have enough time to actually run the water through the pump and check my uh, sprinkler heads today. So we'll see how far we get. If not today, then definitely tomorrow. I, I'm off tomorrow as well. So what I'm doing is, uh, let me show you what I have here. I have, this is 14 AWG. Uh, it's 600 volt rated. It's got a, inside there's a green, a white, and a black. And I've got my low pressure switch. So the way this guy works, as far as I understand it, uh, I'm going to put this uh, little assembly together. It has a little cover on it, but you need this off to wire it. This will connect, and I'll have one on the other side. You'll have a line coming in. That's going to be from my 240 volts AC. Uh, ground, and then I'll probably do black and white here. And then a separate line going to the pump, and that'll be uh, black and white and ground again. And it'll go out, and uh, I'll... I'm actually going to take the line and I'm going to put it inside this aluminum casing since it's outdoors to keep it uh, protected from the elements, uh, even though this heavy sheathing on it would protect it pretty well too. Uh, this will dry out in the sun, I think, over time, so why not Why not have an extra layer of protection, I think. And the way this uh, works is this nipple in here goes uh, into a T that I have on my booster pump assembly, and it feels the water pressure. It uses this spring, and my understanding of it, uh, I'm not a mechanical engineer, I'm an electrical engineer, so not 100% not sure, but it's, I think basically what it does is it monitors the pressure, and if it gets below 12 PSI roughly, uh, it, it flips this switch which kills uh, the line, it cuts the power to the line going to the booster pump. And the live side coming in from the 240 volt AC will stay active. That doesn't interrupt anything. It just interrupts the, uh, the circuit so the booster pump doesn't burn up. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to start putting this stuff together and then uh, I'll go out to the pump once I have a little bit of this assembled and we're going to strip the... Uh, the wiring and connect all the leads and i'll show you what that looks like when it's uh when it's all finished or i don't know maybe while i'm doing it we'll see how it goes all right so i'm outside now i've got the back of my booster pump uh pulled off uh, that's this cover here uh just a couple simple screws to pull that guy off and I've got my, uh, this is going to be where my common will go, coming from the uh, low pressure switch. Uh, that's the green wire. And then I'll have the black and white here for the circuit itself. It'll come in through this. I just put this guy on. And then uh, you can see I've finally mounted my uh, low pressure switch here. And I'm just sizing up the cord. So I'm figuring uh, I've got a little extra up there. I can always trim it down a little and I'll connect it to the contacts here. Come down into this guy. And then I'm going to probably cut it somewhere around here. Uh, I'll have to strip the wire down and expose it and put on some connectors. Um, and then once this side is uh, all assembled, I'll repeat the same process going from the line side, which is going to go here. It's going to come up through here, just like this guy is. That's actually my 240. Come up into here. It'll connect to these three connectors here, and I'll tighten everything up, and I'll be done. So uh, I'm going to go cut the wire and uh, put my connector connectors on, and then uh, I'll be back to show you how I assemble it. So quick uh, shot of how I stripped my wire. Um, I have these wire strippers that are great for small wires, but for something large like this, I didn't have anything and I went to Home Depot and they don't really have anything. Uh, I'm sure something probably exists, but they don't have anything. They said most people just use one of these guys. So um, I got the other end done fairly easily and the technique I used uh, I figured I'd just share it. I'm not going to show you because uh, I'm working by myself right now and I don't have any way to set the camera up really. Uh, I just did a couple really thin vertical lines or whatever along this parallel lines, I guess is a better word. And when I got to the end, I made a few passes in the same groove. And then at the end, I pushed through because you can see the wire at the end. So, you know, if you're going too deep. And then I just took a pair of needle nose pliers and I kind of worked it till it was open and it actually split down the middle really easy. So once you get that 
groove going and you start tearing it with the pliers or even your hands, it just comes apart pretty easy. And then I got it about as long as I wanted on this end and uh, was able to then just take, uh, it bends back and then I just use these rusty old clippers that were nearby and cut it to re cut the sheathing off. So I still have to strip that end, but uh, I figured if you've never worked with this before, this might save you some hassle trying to, uh, I drove to Home Depot to find something and they're like, nope. So anyway, uh, so now I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna put these guys on the end once I get them stripped, that way they're easier to connect into the screws. And uh, that's that. So uh, I'm gonna finish doing this right now and then uh, we'll move to the next thing. All right, so uh, real quickly, I'm just gonna show how I uh, use put the gripper on. Um, so you basically, you're gonna, once you strip your wire, it's braided wire I'm using. So you take it and you just twist it, which is what I've already done here. And you take your uh, little connector here uh, and you slide it in and you check to see that it's poking through. That'll give us a good contact. And now the insulator stops it from going forward. And the shape of these, there's a tiny little, uh, you can see there's like a, a different, this is a little white uh, narrower than this end. And you wanna line your crimping tool up on there. And the way I know what crimping size to use, on my actual pliers, I have 10 to 16 here, so it fits in that range. So I'm going to put it between those grooves right there, 10 to 16, and you line it up on that little narrower section, and you just give it a nice, whoops, fell out. Nice job, Monahan. Uh, I'm going to have to twist it again and get it back in there. That's what happens when you're trying to watch the video and do this at the same time. Let's get it on there. Hopefully, this is in view. And fell off and we just get it in there and you give it some considerable force and it uh it crimps and it should stay on if i did it right yep i'm trying to pull it off it's not going anywhere so that's how you connect it all right now don't do what i did i made a mistake when i was uh connecting put my connectors on first so what i needed was this green the common needed to be a little bit longer than my white and my black wires and I was trying to make it work and there's just the wires too stiff to connect here. So I ended up wasting a couple connectors. I uh, had to cut them down and reconnect. And I actually, when I was doing this in the garage, I actually thought of that when I started to do the other end. So the other end, I was smart enough to see if it worked before I did it. So I, can, I have one connected. The other two, I didn't even strip yet because I figured I might have to size them to connect them. And sure enough, the, the black will go up here It'll be easy, but down here, the green is a little too long. So if I had put a connector on it, I would uh, be wasting another one because I would have to cut it. And I'll be able to cut uh, cut it and strip it and crimp it uh, in here. So uh, smart enough to do this on this end, but uh, I made the mistake here. So all it is is a couple of these guys connectors, but it's time too. So, I mean, I'd like to be done. So anyway, uh, I have this end connected. I'm gonna connect the other end and then I'm gonna do the same thing from here to here. Uh, I have to cut the uh, this with some tin snips and size it to go over this before I connect it. I'm just getting the fittings first, and I'm going to disconnect it, cut the aluminum to go over it, and then uh, I'll be done with that. So it's kind of it's getting there. It's just slow going. I keep making stupid mistakes. It is what it is. Boom! She's all done. I got one side connected. This side's all done. Let me rephrase that. I still have to do the other side. Uh, I had a couple other errors I made, but nothing too major. Uh, I trimmed those down and I was able to get them connected. Something I forgot to mention. Uh, I don't know. I might have made it another and mentioned in another video. I'm trying to get it focusing here because this is a cheap camera. But you can see over here that little 230. Um, my system is wired for uh, 240 uh, AC. This is. Uh, this is just a little switch and it tells you this is the default position. You would flip it up if you were using 115. I'm using 230, so uh, did I say 240? Anyway, um, I'm using 230, so I'm leaving it in this position. And another thing I probably should have mentioned all along, if you're working on electric, uh, kill the power. Don't electrocute yourself, um, especially if you have no idea what you're doing and you're just fooling around. Make sure you go to your breaker and kill everything and uh, turn your power off so you don't, uh, you know, zzz, zzz. This beauty is finished. Everything is connected the way it needs to be. All I have left to do is to wire my front 
two valves and then I can actually fill the front system at least the front two zones with water and test it I've got my low pressure switch all covered up and ready to go my pressure gauge is in here locked everything down so nobody electrocutes themselves and including me and uh, that's all she wrote I'm pretty excited because uh, this was a uh, pain figuring this whole thing out and how I wanted to set it up and putting it together All right, so now I'm getting ready to wire my two uh, front two zones. This is going to be my first zone. This is my 25 foot heads in the front, and then I want this to be zone two. Um, these are just 15 footers. Uh, I've already taken my wire, so you can see I've got four wires. I'm going to make the white my common, and what that means is the white will connect to both of these. I'll just tie one of these leads. It doesn't matter which one. And I'll tie one of these to the white so the white is common. And then later at the box, when I go to at the timer, when I go to connect, I'll put the white to common. That that's uh, so they're all connected properly. And then I can pick any colors. Uh, I'm going to do red for my zone one. Uh, and all I have to remember is when I set it at the box that I take the red lead at the other end and I connect that to zone one at the timer. So I'll connect red to the other lead here. And then what I'll do is I'll use blue for this zone two. And then again at the box, I'll connect the blue lead on the other end to zone two. So I'm going to wire this all up. And then uh, when I'm done, I'll show you because I'm shooting this by myself. Uh, so I can't do it with uh, one hand. I'm talented, but not that talented. I tried to make this as simple as possible. So what I have is the two wires coming from here. I got the red connected to one of the wires again it really doesn't matter which one and then the common from the other uh, from valve one is uh, connected to the white and then on this side this is my second valve I've got the blue connected to one of the leads and I've got the common again connected to white so then all I got to do now is uh, put a couple caps on these uh, and then I'm going to set the wires a little differently where they're going to sit and then I'll go down and connect it at the box. Uh, and all I have to remember is red is on zone uh, one and blue is on zone two. Uh, I put a little note in my phone because uh, in the seven or eight seconds it'll take me to get downstairs, I'll forget that. So anyway, uh, I'll go down and show you how to wire it at the box. The timer, I keep saying box, same thing. It's in a box. <laughs> and by caps, I just meant these little yellow guys. Screw them on. Don't touch them when there's electric going through them. Zzz, zzz. That's all. All right, so I'm at my timer now, and now all I got to do is connect everything. So my common is going to go here. I uh, had connect. It's going to be the share the same uh, signal that the booster pump shares, the same common. And then you can't really see them here, but each one of these screws, there's a little six, five, four, three, two, one. And once I have the timers on, that's how you know which one is which. So Red is my zone one, so I'm going to connect my red to zone one, my blue to zone two, uh, and then I'll be uh, done wiring the front, and I'm probably going to go eat some dinner, and then I may test it tonight, but most likely uh, once I sit down, I'm done, and I'll uh, test it tomorrow. Uh, either way, I'll share some footage once I get that going, so I'll probably fill it with water tonight, and that way by tomorrow I'll be able to see if I have any leaks in the, uh, any of the clamps that need to be tightened up. But uh I'm going to tighten, put these guys in, connect them. All you little, same thing you do for the booster pump. You just hook it around and you screw it in. You just hook it around and you screw it in. So, uh, super easy. All right, so this guy's done. I've got zone uh, one here, zone two here, my common there. That's all connected. I'm going to put a label on it. Uh, the guy who had this before me had done that, and I think that's a, just a smart move. Just some duct tape wrapped around with some Sharpie. It's going to say zone one and zone two for this one, and I'll just continue that for each wire I bring in because there's going to be a bunch, and I'm not going to remember in the future which one goes to which. Um, I'm writing everything down, but it's you know it's just as easy to look at a label. Anyway, I'm going to go turn the water on to the booster pump, so that'll fill and I'll probably manually open the valves uh, to let the lines fill and that'll uh, once they're full I'll be able to see if there's any obvious leaks anywhere which we haven't been able to do yet and then uh, that's probably going to be it for tonight so let's go do that okay so for me to get water to the pump the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crack the ball valve so it's open Ugh, we got that guy 
Then we've got another one over here because I'm OCD and had to have excessive amounts of everything. So that guy's on. So this guy should, by all accounts, be filling with water. We should have some flow. Now, according to... Oh, we definitely have some leak. <laughs> okay, well, that's why we're doing it. Uh, that'll have to be tighter. And then uh, I guess I can kill that for the moment. <laughs> uh, we'll kill that and tighten that guy up in a minute. Um, and then the Rainbird manual says we need to turn the solenoid a quarter turn to a half a turn counterclockwise to get the water going through. Um, I'm going to do that before and then I'm do that now and then I'm going to tighten it up. So I'd say that's about a half a turn, something like that. And then do the same thing on the first zone. So they should be filling with water, but they're not going to fill with much water because I closed uh, the ball valve again. So I can tighten this guy up. It's clearly leaking. That's not good. Um, let me go get my wrenches and tighten that up and we'll uh, see if uh, we can uh, get this thing working tonight or at least get water to the system tonight without any leaks. All right, so you can see I've got the water in the on position. I don't have any water coming out. Uh, I'm using this pipe wrench and this uh, giant pair of channel locks that my neighbor gave me. I can't quite, I think I can get it a little tighter. There's still a little bit of water under here. Uh, I'm gonna need to borrow another pipe wrench from somebody and I think I can crack it just a little tighter. The thing is you have to be careful because I got PVC over here and if I'm not countering it, with the same amount I'm trying to tighten it with, it can move this and this stuff can break. It breaks pretty easy, so I'm trying to be careful with that. Uh, on the plus side, I had turned the manual valves on. Turn these on manually, I turned them off, but when you turn them on, you can hear the water and I have a head right there and there was water coming out of it a second ago. Um, and actually, if you look at this guy right here, you can see it's it's spurting out. It just doesn't have much pressure, which is why we're using the booster pump. But uh, I don't want to test these tonight. I just want to fill the system with water right now. And I'm getting soaked, so I'm going to move and uh, make a new video tomorrow when I test my system. But this is pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm getting soaked. Jesus, get up. All right, this was too cool not to do just a quick uh, a quick video showing of some of the heads. Uh, these are 15-foot uh just spraying this is all just with the manual pressure and nothing really positioned i've got a head going there that guy's going i got a 25 footer over in that direction there's too much contrast to really see it but shooting into my neighbor's yard right there i've got this little guy going here it's a that'll be a 25 footer and this is manual without a booster pump so they're not shooting very far and that's why we need the booster pump i've got one going down on the curb there that guy's shooting out to the street and i've got like another uh, just a pop-up going right here and there's a few more over here. So it's pretty exciting after all the work we put in um, and ideally it'll uh, We can get through the rest of it relatively quickly and move on with our lives and forget about all this stuff and take it for granted So anyway, uh, pretty fun stuff. Uh, I'm glad I got to this tonight. It's a uh, it's a benchmark uh, That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching